One of gaming's most badass and iconic assassins is back in Hitman, the first game in the long-running series without a fancy subtitle. From that fact alone, some of you may assume that this marks a complete reboot of the series, but that's not the case. The game actually acknowledges events of previous entries and picks up seven years after Absolution. Even so, it's clear that IO Interactive was aiming for a fresh start. After past events are acknowledged following the prologue mission, they are self them referenced again, and the studio even took bold liberties like altering features of veteran characters, including the protagonist, Agent 47. Perhaps the term soft reboot is more appropriate in this situation. It's a risky move, but this opens up the possibility of appealing to newcomers of the series. That's not to say that Hitman doesn't retain some core elements that veterans will enjoy as well. The story, for example, once again delves into grand conspiracies and clandestine organizations. But what's really cool, I thought, is that this time the game places a large emphasis on Agent 47's past and how the consequences of his actions are beginning to catch up to him, hinting that the series might delve deeper into his origin story. It's a solid foundation, but unfortunately Hitman Season 1 doesn't do enough with the setup, presenting a story that is, all things considered, bare bones. Partly to blame for this is the short length and low quantity of pre-rendered cutscenes, the game's primary source of story development. While the cutscenes themselves are really well made and feature some great performances by all the actors, there's just not enough of them to tell an extensive narrative. Let me put it this way, while the game advertises its six episodes as a season, it felt more like I had only seen half a season's worth of story material by the time credits rolled, maybe even a third. You know that point in a season of a TV show when things start to pick up, the story finally starts going somewhere, and you feel like the show has finally got you hooked? That's around the point where Hitman Season 1 cuts off. It's this abrupt ending that leaves you on a cliffhanger without really resolving any major story arcs. The good news is that Season 2 was recently greenlit, so here's hoping that Season 2 will take full advantage of Season 1's compelling setup and succeeds in telling a denser and richer plot. Fortunately, where Hitman stumbles on its bare-bones story, it takes off running when it comes to its sandbox stealth gameplay. As the game's title suggests, the goal is to kill your targets. You'll be doing this in one of six varied and unique sandbox locales, one per episode, and each based on a different part of the world. Settings include Paris, France, Sapienza, Italy, Marrakesh, Morocco, Bangkok, Thailand, Colorado, USA, and Hokkaido, Japan. These are all not only gorgeous to behold with their beautiful vistas, magnificent structures, attention to detail, and overall artistic direction, but also incredibly expansive and open, offering a level of freedom that is unprecedented for the series. Think Metal Gear Solid 5, but with a smaller, albeit more focused assortment of tools and weapons, which go hand in glove with Hitman's smaller scale operations and its hide in plain sight style of stealth. The best analogy I could come up with for Hitman Season 1's gameplay is that it is essentially an interactive six-act play. So think of the game's six episodes as the play's six acts, the game's infrastructure as the stage, and each of the six unique sandbox levels as the different sets for each act. Like in a real-life production, the Hitman interactive play progresses act by act, with small intermissions in between each act to allow for set and costume changes and the like. This theater analogy also happens to be the scenario presented in the game's prologue mission, which has Agent 47 undergo a test mission that involves carrying out a pretend assassination contract in a pre-built set populated by actors. Speaking of sets, the six main ones are not only expansive, but also adorned with all manners of impressive set pieces and structures meant to not only mesmerize the audience, but also for actors on stage to navigate and interact with. The actors in this case are, of course, all of the NPCs scattered throughout a level, all of who have extensively rehearsed the play, if you will, to perform their roles as identically as possible every time. They will say the same lines at just the right time, perform the same actions at the appropriate moments, react to evolving situations accordingly, and be exactly where they're supposed to be at all times. Now, most of these actors play smaller ensemble roles to fill the background, but there are of course those who play lead and supporting roles in each act's scripted assassination drama. 
There is one actor, however, who plays by different rules from the rest. That actor is you, the player, who has been cast as the lead role and protagonist, Agent 47. You are unique in that, unlike other actors, there is no script or blocking you have to follow. You have free reign to do as you please. That's where the interactive aspect of this play comes in. You are the one variable that can cause chaos amidst the scripted order. But even the chaos is to some degree organized. There are still some basic overarching rules that everyone must follow to maintain the integrity of the production. And the play was directed in such a way that no matter what the player tries, situations will evolve dynamically and things will sort of work themselves out. What this all amounts to is a sense of organized chaos with just the right balance of boundaries and freedom. Eventually, everything converges to a single destination, the assassination of your targets. It's a straightforward objective, but the journey to getting there is anything but. Thanks to a combination of complex, multi-threaded scripts, grand, expansive, dense sets, and dedicated actors to populate them, the director of this play ensured that each mission would be as challenging as they are entertaining. This culminates into a game that is consistently unpredictable with every playthrough of a mission. Now, before every mission, one of the things you can do is decide where on the level you want to start and what you want to bring with you. Think of these as intermissions between acts where actors get to put on the appropriate costumes, get their props in order, and get to where they need to be on stage before the curtains open. How the player chooses to set up before the beginning of an act is up to them and will have a significant impact on how assassinations can play out. Admittedly, the game does start out somewhat restrictive with the limited selection of starting locations, props, and costumes available early on, but as missions are completed alongside the various challenges and side objectives attached to them, the player will gain experience points towards something called Mastery Level. Each episode or act has its own separate Mastery Level with a ceiling of level 20, and with each level gained, Players will unlock new starting locations, new weapons and tools, and new costumes to equip Agent 47 with, and that's when the game really starts to open up and present tons of new creative methods to accomplish objectives, challenges, and side missions, which then serves to further increase mastery level, which then encourages further replays that may unlock more new props and starting locations and costumes for even more gameplay options, and it's this continuous snowball effect and vicious cycle that offers a ton of replayability. It's not just the tools you start out with that will determine your approach either. Exploration is also vital to success and rewarding in equal measures, often yielding on-site discoveries such as weapons and tools that offer more clever forms of lethal and non-lethal takedowns, improvised costumes to remain inconspicuous or to be able to access new areas, shortcuts and new routes to more easily reach certain areas of the map, various forms of distractions, and all manners of impromptu benefits that will serve to open up new opportunities to further spark your imagination. To put it simply, the better you get to know each set of this interactive play and all of their intricacies, the more your options will expand. Now, if you're the kind of player who is daunted by the notion of freeform stealth, don't fret. The director of this play has also prepared various optional scripts that the player actor can choose to follow. These are called opportunities. Simply select one of these scripted paths from the menu and the game will guide you via objective markers. You may also stumble upon new intel for these opportunities through things like gossip and conversations that NPCs engage in, which may further clarify your opportunities and make them easier to carry out. But even when following these scripted paths, there is still a lot of room for improvisation. At any point, the player can choose to deviate from their predetermined path and go back to improvising. In essence, Hitman can be as freeform or as linear as you want it to be. And regardless of which way you choose to tackle the game's missions, there is plenty of reason to try again. In fact, the game relies on replayability to extend its value. None of the game's six missions are long on their own merit, so if you're the kind of player who prefers to finish the game once and then be done with it, then you may not find as much value in Hitman as other people would. But if you come to appreciate all the elements that make Hitman's missions so replayable, you may find yourself hooked for weeks on end. And if you think the game's main missions offer replayability, don't even get me started with the other mission types, Escalation, Elusive Target, and Contract. They all essentially reuse the game's six main maps, 
but they also offer different assassination targets as well as new twists to objectives. Escalation missions, for example, occur in short bursts but have multiple layers to them. They begin with fairly simple objectives, but as you complete each level of an escalation mission, new conditions are added on top, and by the highest level you'll be assassinating numerous targets and adhering to stipulations like having to kill each target within a certain time frame of one another, having to kill them with specific weapons, or having to find a switch to deactivate mines guarding all the exits before you make your way out of a mission, stuff like that. Oh, and unlike main missions, you can't save at any point during escalation missions, so you have to complete all of the objectives in one go. It's this interesting challenge mode style of gameplay, which relies on your mental and muscle memory. They may also take a number of tries, but you'll eventually develop a process for the most efficient way to complete objectives, and eventually everything will feel like clockwork. There are tons of these for each of the six maps, by the way, and they all have different targets and escalating conditions. Then we have elusive target missions. Every few days or so, the game developers will send out one of these to players' dashboards and have them eliminate a custom, newly made elusive NPC in one of the game's six main maps. What makes elusive target missions so unique is that you only have a limited amount of real life hours to complete them and you only have one chance at it. If you don't complete an elusive target mission before time runs out, it's gone forever. If you're killed in action while attempting one, you will fail the mission and will never be able to play it again. And like escalation missions, you can't save at any point, so it's all or nothing. Now, if you succeed, you'll take pleasure in knowing that you've seized this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and be rewarded with exclusive costumes, items, and such. So these are high-risk, high-reward, once-in-a-lifetime events that have a sense of levity you won't find in any other mission types. Last but not least, we have contract missions. What's cool about these is that they're all created by other players. Creators can choose from a number of parameters, including the contract setting, specific targets, and various conditions for killing them, after which they can be uploaded for other players to try out. While these aren't nearly as extensive as the main missions, they do offer some unique and interesting challenges, as well as near endless additional content amidst the vast sea of user-created content. Oh, and did I mention that every mission in this game has leaderboards? The more efficiently you complete these missions, so no civilian casualties, no bodies found, meeting specific conditions and such, and the faster you manage to complete them, the more points you'll earn for the world to see. So those who find pleasure in competition may find even further replay value. Now, the longevity of the game will also depend on how long you can tolerate playing the game's six maps over and over and over again. There are so many times you can replay the same level before things start to become monotonous, regardless of reshuffled objectives. You may also find yourself having to tolerate the occasionally dodgy AI. While these actors do a fine job of keeping to the script, there are times when their reactions to situations can be inconsistent. Sometimes they feel too omniscient, and other times the AI feels too easy to take advantage of. And it happens enough times to disrupt immersion of this interactive play. It's not so bad as to be fatal, but it's definitely noticeable. One last unfortunate flaw that I have to point out, and this one was the most frustrating for me, was the way both lethal and non-lethal takedowns are assigned to the same button. I found that it was way too easy to perform a lethal takedown when the intention was to go non-lethal. The reason for this is because the game basically has a takedown button, and whether you do a lethal takedown or a non-lethal takedown depends on whether your weapon is a lethal weapon or a non-lethal weapon, or if your weapon is drawn. If it's holstered, it'll do a non-lethal takedown. If it's drawn and it's lethal, it'll do a lethal takedown. And if it's drawn and it's non-lethal, it'll just knock the guy out. That doesn't sound too bad, but in practice, you may occasionally find yourself forgetting that Agent 47 is currently wielding a lethal weapon, particularly when small, inconspicuous ones like screwdrivers are involved. The best solution for this would have been to just separate lethal and non-lethal takedowns to two different inputs and give every weapon both a lethal and non-lethal mode. I don't see why Agent 47 has to shoot his silenced weapon when performing a takedown with it, when he could just strike someone from behind with the butt of the gun. So giving players the option by separating lethal and non-lethal to two separate buttons would have been a simple and ideal solution. 
Furthermore, I often found that the game had trouble registering my intention to perform a stealthy takedown, which requires that the player situate Agent 47 behind their target. But even after doing so, there were far too many times in which the game would register my sneak attack as a frontal assault instead, which makes a lot of noise and leads to detection. There is nothing more frustrating than when a perfect setup is ruined by technical mishaps. But aside from that, and the previously mentioned drawbacks such as the barebones story and the inconsistent AI, the new Hitman is a big step in the right direction. If they can expand the plot in a big way for Season 2, make improvements to the AI, refine the mechanics a bit, and maybe add a little more polish to the technical side of things, we could have a real winner here. But until then, we have Season 1 to mull us over with its theatrical sandbox stealth experience. Thus concludes my review of Hitman. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below what you think about the game if you have tried it already. And if you haven't, let me know if I've swayed you one way or another. And to be further updated on further video game reviews, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.